Hello learners. In this video, I'm going to share the time response specifications of a second order system. All of us know that order of the system is given by the highest power of S in the denominator of the transfer function. So in case the highest power of S in the denominator of the transfer function is two, then it will be a second order system. So how do we ascertain the quality of the response for a second order system that is given in terms of the time response specifications. So let us consider a second order system that is uh, given by this block diagram k divided by s into gs is equal to k divided by s into js plus f. So overall transfer function between G C cs and rs it is given as equal to k divided by jsk plus fs plus k and in standard form the second order system is represented as cs upon rs is equal to omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square here omega is the uh, undamped natural frequency zeta is the damping ratio and um, uh, and uh, S is basically the uh, frequency uh, domain in which we are working. So for the underdamped case, the value of zeta will be varying between 0 and 1. For critically damped case, zeta will be equal to 1. And for overdamped case, zeta will be greater than 1. So we'll be considering the response of the second order system for all uh, categories. So first of all, we consider a second order system and we'll consider its unit step response. Response is basically the output and unit step response that how the output is changing when the input is unit step. So when input is unit step, then RS, the input in S domain can be represented as equal to one divided by S. So CS will become equal to 1 divided by S into omega n square divided by S square plus 2 zeta omega n S plus omega n square. When we resolve this into partial fraction, then we'll get CS equal to this. And in order to get the value of the response with respect to the time, we are having CT as equal to this. It is given as equal to this. So this is just inverse Laplace transformation of this equation. So CT is represented as uh, given in this. And if we want to get the error, error will be the difference between the reference input and the actual output. So it will be given by this expression. So unit step response of a second order system, it can be represented like this. It is given in this graph. So you can very well see that as the value of zeta is changing, this is the uh, response, unit step response of a second order system for zeta equal to zero. Then as the value of zeta is increasing, then it becomes 0.1, then it becomes 0.2, till it becomes one. When zeta becomes equal to one, it means the system has become critically damped. And after that, the system becomes over damped. Damping, uh, basically, uh, in case, it is more that will reduce the oscillation of the system, but it will make up the system sluggish. And when damping ratio is less, then oscillations are more, but the system response is fast. And at a critically uh, damped system, in case zeta is equal to one, there we are having, of course, uh, such system are, are also sluggish and they are slow in performance. So under damped case, we are first of all taking into consideration where uh, since uh, when zeta is less than one, then it's an under damped case. Uh, we are taking a specific case of zeta equal to zero. So unit, uh, unit step response will be given as equal to CT equal to one minus cos of omega nt. Then for the critically damped case, that is zeta equal to one, CT is equal to one minus e to the power minus omega nt into 1 plus omega nt. <clears throat> then over damped case, if we take into account the second order system, its unit step 
response will be given by uh, the expression this ct equal to this where we have determined the value of roots s1 and s2 as equal to this so uh, these are the responses of the second order system for unit step input applied to it so what do we ascertain what do we want to make out from these responses we want to analyze the performance of the system from these responses and this performance is analyzed in of certain specifications so like this is the response of a uh, undernamed second order system here we can see there are five main specifications which are used to, to evaluate the performance of a second order system the first one is the delay time it is the time taken by the response to reach to 50% of its final value for the first time then rise time this is second specification it is the time taken by the within this you can see the delay time this is the uh, this is the reference value because this is a unit step input is the desired output so uh, this is 0.5 value the time taken by the system to reach to 50% of its final value it was supposed to reach to a value equal to 1 it has reached to a value equal to 0.5 at this instant of time so this is termed as the delay time then time taken by the system to rise from 0 to 100% of its final value so from 0 to 100% of its final value it was supposed to reach this value so the time taken for this is termed as the rise time so this is the rise time then peak time is the time taken by the system response to reach the first peak so it's starting from here response then it is reaching the first peak over here the time taken by the system response to reach this value is termed as the peak time then we require the system output to be equal to one but the system uh, output becomes quite more than its value before finally it settles down to a value near to the desired value so this uh, difference between the desired output and the maximum value of the actual output this is termed as the maximum overshoot and uh, the time taken by the system to reach to its first maximum value for the first time it is termed as the uh, it, it is termed as the peak time then peak overshoot is the difference between the desired output and the maximum value of the actual output and it is expressed in term of percentage it is defined as the difference between the desired output and the actual output expressed as a percentage of the uh, desired output then we are having the settling time the system is taking like you can uh, look at the response of the system the system is uh, initially oscillatory then finally it settled down to a value that is near to the desired value so time taken by the system to stay and reach within two percent or five percent of the tolerance band it is terms as, as the settling time so uh, it's basically this is like you you ha you are having this was the desired output and then we have taken a band around it that is that is the allowable tolerance so th that uh, after uh, this point of time the system response is staying within this allowable band so it means that ts after this the system is within the particular band so so this instant of time is termed as the settling time and this response has been shown for the value of zeta line between 0.4 to 0.5 so it is a underlying case now we'll get the expressions for all of these specifications because these are very important when we talk about the rise time we talk about the peak time then it is a uh, ascertaining the that how fast the risk how fast the system is in case uh, the value of rise time delay time peak time it is less it means the system response is fast similarly when we talk about the maximum overshoot it is telling that how the system uh, whether the system is stable or not in case the value of the maximum overshoot is more then it means that system is tending towards instability then Finally, we can have the 
steady state response where we are calculating the difference between the desired output and the actual output so that is telling us about how the system how much the system is accurate so uh, we these type these specifications are very important and we'll calculate each of these specification one by one first of all the rise time this is the time taken by the system response to reach to 100% of its final value for the first time so at when time is equal to rise time ctr will become equal to 1 because the input is a unit step input so desired output is equal to 1 so the time taken by the uh, system to reach to uh, this value 1 Uh, that is calculated by just having because ct uh, we we had derived an expression for ct within that we substitute t equal to tr and its value equal to one when we solve this then we get the value of the rise time tr is given by this then we are having the peak time in order to uh, get the value of the peak time we will first of all calculate the time at which the uh derivative of output becomes equal to 0 because that is the point of maxima so for that we we have already uh, derived the expression for ct here you can very well see we here we have derived the expression for ct for the over damped case for the under damped case for the critical critically damped case so uh, within this when we substitute dc by dt equal to 0 and calculate the value of time then that will be equal to the peak time that we have calculated as pi divided by omega t. then maximum overshoot this is the difference between the maximum uh, value of the output and the uh, desired output so desired output is one and maximum value of the output occurs when t is equal to tp so the difference between the two is equal to the maximum overshoot and it is given by this expression and then we have the settling time this is the time taken by the system response to reach and stay within the tolerance band or stay within this envelope so this is uh, basically the this is making a envelope on the uh, on uh, along within this quadrant and within this quadrant this is making an envelope so for the system uh, response to stay within this envelope uh, if we are taking 2% band then uh, the settling time is coming out to be 4 divided by z omega n in case we are taking the 5% band then the settling time is coming out to be 3 divided by z omega n this is another all these uh, specifications they should be as less as possible because in case the value of the settling time value of the rise time is less it means that the system response is fast system is hurriedly Uh, moving towards the uh, set point or the desired output and in case maximum overshoot is less it means that the system stability is not endangered the system is uh, uh, working properly so uh, these are uh, all the transient state specifications of the second order system uh, within this we have not taken into account the steady state specification uh, Th these are all the transient state specification there is only one steady state specification that is the steady state error that is the error between the desired output and the actual output as time t is tending towards infinity that is the steady state error that also can be calculated and we can uh, we can just judge that whether the system is working properly or not by having a look at the values of these specifications thank you so much